Okay, well I've had a read of the book and to be honest it's a little bit confusing um, because the sort of basic intro says to install the software first then add your drives and then connect it and power it up but the more sort of in detail the installation guide says to put in your drives, connect it all up, power it up and then add the software so I'm actually I'm going to do the software first get that installed um, because it does say that the drub will be automatically detected okay so let's get this um, software installed first Data Robotics Inc to install Drobo dashboard double click this icon continue da -da 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 -da. continue that's the license agreement agree I've taken the right decision to put the software on first, obviously. Okay, so here we go. Continue. Install. Oh, I'll just turn the camera away while I put my password in. And here we go. It's installing the Drobo dashboard. First of all, there's our Firewire cable here because I'm going to connect it with Firewire 800. It's about a couple of metres or a metre and a half. Power. Put the power lead in. And all we need now is a plug. Let's put this in. Wait a minute, I want to put the drives in first, don't I? Right, let's get these drives installed. I'll just move the firewire cable around the other side. Drive installation. Front cover off. I'll leave the plastic on for now. Let's get out these drives I've got. As I said, these are one and a half terabytes Seagate Barracudas. 7200 RPM. Not sure how much cash they've got, about 32 meg or something. But as I say, very good bang for buck these drives, so 69 quid each. Right, you get the drive right way up, connectors at the back, and you just slide it into the slot. Lever out of the way. Come on, in you go, there we are. Just slide that in. Push it home, that's one, and the little clip clicks back like that. Shall I just show that again? In close up, I think. Okay, so add another drive. Connectors to the back, silver side up, circuit boards down, and then you just slide that in. Like that. Right in you go. There we are. Gentle, gentle, gentle. And then just push it home into the connectors and the little clip snaps over. These little doors just push forward like that when you insert a drive. So I'll put the other two in and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so I've um, added all the hard drives and I'll tell you what I'm going to do actually. I'm going to just um, do a software update on the Drobo software first. Okay, well, apparently there is an update. I'm on version 1.6 something, and there's an update on the Drobo website of uh, 1.73. However, the manual says that during the install of the software, it will ask if you want to automatically check for updates. And, um, well, I didn't see that, and we've got the video as evidence. Uh, I didn't see it saying anything about checking for updates. So, um... That's that. Also, an absolutely miserable download speed. 19 kilobytes a second. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I don't think my internet connection is that bad, is it? But anyway, um, so I have to wait until this update's downloaded and then I'll install it and then we'll connect it up, okay? But I'm a bit concerned about this thing about 
but it didn't show the up, you know, the, the option for looking for an update when it installed. Um, anyway, whatever. Okay, so we got Drobo updated to version 173 and uh, rebooted the Mac and everything. So now we can actually get the thing powered up. Okay. There we are. Right. She's all ready to go. So, let's plug in the power. Firewire's already connected. Let's plug in some power. Woo, and off we go. Well, fan noise isn't that bad. Let me just turn it around. Okay, so this is me talking a foot from the camera at a normal talking voice. That's the fan working. It's not that noisy. That's not bad. Right, so as you can see, something's happening here, so we better go back and look at the on screen what's happening. Okay, so bearing in mind this Drobo is sold as a product that any total beginner can use, here are my comments. Um, now, first of all, OSX starts throwing up these initialization disk flags, which could freak a noob. The manual doesn't mention anything about that, but you need to ignore those. And then you find it's asking if you want to automatically update the, s <laughs> update the Drobo which the manual quite clearly says should happen when you install the software so the manual is completely wrong I'd already done the man uh, I'd already manually updated the software okay if you remember so I thought well okay well the physical Drobo unit's attached now so maybe there's a firmware update so I'll say yes so I said yes and then what happened was the Drobo then threw up flags saying do I want to format the volume so I thought well I've sent it off for an update so I'll say no so I said no don't format it I want to wait until it goes looking for an update and then it just stopped I mean, nothing happened at all uh, exactly so the bottom line is um, I guess that update would happen if you hadn't manually updated but the manual is completely wrong so after the update you're then asked to create a volume okay so you click to create your volume and then you're presented with the dialogue about what type of machine you're going to use it with, whether it's going to be a Mac or whether you're going to connect to a PC or Mac and PC. Now I'm using it only with Mac, only with Mac, so I'm going to use HFS Plus, but if you're using it with Windows machines you want to check that out, okay, because um, it's going to be important. Okay, so you click continue once you've chosen your file system and then comes the next bit which will completely screw beginners it then says to you what size would your volume would you like your volume to be and it offers you this default of 16 terabytes now I've put four one and a half terabyte disks in here that you may have put four five hundred gigabyte disks in or whatever but the point is at the current today's current date there aren't any SATA drives big enough to put four in and have 16 terabytes so again this will completely throw the noobs and there is nothing at all in the manual about it not a single word is said now I've got five RAID arrays around this place from externals to, in to internal RAID arrays to cabinet RAID arrays in rack servers and I've built plenty of RAIDs and I had to sort of scratch my head at this point but and check what was going on but what it is is OS X and um, Vista and Windows 7 can address a maximum volume size of 16 terabytes. Okay, so if you're using one of those operating systems, what Drobo is basically going to do is it's going to create a sort of um, a virtual volume at the maximum possible size the operating system can address. And then that's how Drobo can then expand the space every time you add in bigger drives without having to reformat the entire RAID array, you see. That's how it can use bigger disks and expand and expand. But of course that is going to completely throw the beginner and the manual should mention it properly. Now at this point you might think, well, two terabytes are the biggest drives you can get. And if I put four two terabyte drives in, that will equal eight terabytes. So I should choose eight terabytes as the maximum. But again, 
down the line in the future, there's going to be bigger than two terabyte SATA drives appearing. So, you know, the bottom line is, which the manual just utterly doesn't mention anything to do with this, but the bottom line is you want to choose 16 terabytes, the maximum, if you're using Vista, Windows 7, or OS X. Okay, so then I just continued with the default volume name and um, got on with the format, which actually didn't take long at all. Okay, and during the formatting, um, OSX will start throwing up these initialized flags again, which the manual doesn't mention, and in my opinion it should, because it is, you know, marketed at beginners this, but uh, you want to ignore that, because the, f the format is actually taking place in the background there. Uh, it doesn't take long, as I said, um, and once the format's done, you then can access all the control panel and everything, but you cannot access the control panel prior to doing the volume format and everything, you know. So as I say, only takes four or five minutes, and um, then you're ready to go, and there's your Drobo space ready to use, and now we can look at the uh, the controls. So let's check that out next.